Sofia has a lot of characteristics which are very similar to a normal passenger airplane, except for the fact that we've completely gutted the insides and there's a hole in the side of the airplane the size of a garage door and that there's a 17-ton telescope mounted in the back. But other than that, it's uh, pretty much like a regular airplane. My name is Eric Young. I'm the uh, director of the uh, Sophia Science Center. We operate the telescope and the airplane crew that do the science operations. Sophia is a collaboration between NASA and the German Aerospace Center. The Germans have uh, provided the telescope, NASA's provided the airplane. We put a telescope on the airplane because there are parts of the spectrum which are completely blocked in the Earth's atmosphere. This is primarily in the infrared part of the spectrum, and that's basically the heat radiation that's uh, coming from objects. Appearance of things that we can see in visible light is primarily because uh, things are hot enough to give off visible wavelengths. If you get things too cold, then things look redder and redder, and eventually they're so red, the human eye can't see them anymore. What we are actually then sensing is a different kind of light, and it's called infrared. And it turns out that uh, there's a lot of material in the universe. The dust, planets like the Earth, clouds in space, they're all too cold to normally emit in visible light, but by looking in the infrared, we're able to sense them, detect them, and, and measure their properties. Sophia is a 747 SP, called a special performance airplane. It's a little bit shorter than a typical 747, and that's uh, so that it would have lighter weight, but have a, a longer range and higher performance. We begin our missions typically at 39,000 feet or so, a little bit higher than a typical uh, passenger airplane. As we use up fuel and the plane becomes lighter, then we're able to go a little bit higher, and then up to 41,000 feet, and then up to uh, 43,000 feet uh, toward the end of the flight. Uh, we're always trying to be as high as possible because the main thing that blocks infrared light from reaching the ground uh, is water vapor, and Sophia will fly above more than 99% of the water vapor in the atmosphere. It must be about midnight, and we're aboard the Sophia aircraft. It's an airborne observatory with a big telescope in the back that you can see behind me. I'm going to set us up for spectroscopy, but I need you to mark where we, and I tell you to mark it. We'll check, every, we'll check all the pointing for nearby stars, and then we'll check it on Saturn again. So the Earth's atmosphere absorbs at a lot of different wavelengths. We're familiar with uh, the protection we get from ozone blocking out ultraviolet light, but water vapor also is a very strong absorber. Getting up high in the atmosphere, the temperature drops and the water condenses out. Up where we are right now, it's maybe 40 degrees below zero, and the humidity is phenomenally low. All the absorption that we suffer from as ground-based infrared astronomers is mostly underneath our feet here. Another advantage of doing airborne astronomy, in addition to the infrared uh, spectrum opening up, is that we fly in the stratosphere and uh, the stars don't twinkle up here. The reason stars twinkle down where we're used to on the ground is because of turbulence in the troposphere. And the stratosphere, is, it, it isn't turbulent. Probably the sweet spot for Sophia is star formation. The way a star forms is by collapsing out of a molecular cloud, and those are very cold. And as they collapse and shrink, they get hotter, and eventually the star forms and lights up and uh, starts to blow away the dust around it. But it's during those early phases when it's really cold that you need the longest wavelengths, and then as it gets warmer, you need to work towards shorter wavelengths to see what's happening. Sophia has a reflecting telescope. The 
primary mirror is about 100 inches in diameter, and we make that big to uh, collect as much light as we can. We have direct access to the atmosphere. Most glass is also opaque to the infrared, and so if we tried to make a window out of uh, glass, then we wouldn't be able to see uh, through that either. We had to modify the shape of the uh, outer fuselage to ensure that the air would flow over the surface uh, without causing a lot of uh, disturbance because you have this uh, large aperture. So is the star there and we're yes, tracking? Yes, it is. We're tracking on AOIC. The telescope on Sophia is constantly uh, adjusting to all the little tiny motions of the airplane. What we have on Sophia are a set of gyroscopes, a set of cameras, and a set of actually moving mirrors. And all of these uh, systems together adjust the, the telescope to keep it on track. In one sense, it's simpler to launch uh, a satellite into space because once it's up there, then it stays in space all the time. But unlike a satellite, Sophia will come home every night. Because we're able to change cameras, we can have the kind of flexibility that you wouldn't in a space mission. Flying a mission on Sophia actually is very hard work. It's uh, usually like a 14-hour day. Okay, go ahead I think and start most people are naturally uh, daylight people, and Sophia doesn't have a coffee maker on board right now. But okay. the astronomers tend not to, to have a problem staying awake because you're very busy, you're also excited about your observations, and uh, in terms of a telescope flying that's doing astronomical observations, uh, Sophia is, is the biggest and, and uh, the best.